Hiya and welcome to Build. I'm Daniel Welsh and today we are live from London with Westworld's Rodrigo Santoro. Uh, because we're live, if you are a Westworld fan with a burning question for Rodrigo, then please do get in touch with her. You can either find us on Twitter at Build Series LDN, that's Build Series LDN on Twitter, or if you're watching on Facebook, then drop your question into the comments on the video you're currently watching, and we'll do our best to get that to Rodrigo before the end of the interview. Rodrigo, hello, welcome to Build. Thank you very much. I'm so happy you're here. I can't wait to hear all about the new series of Westworld, but before we get too stuck in, let's take a look at a trailer for season two, which right. starts on Monday. So I think it's fair to say that in the last 18 months, Westworld has absolutely blown up. Did you have any idea when you first signed up for the show how big it was going to get? Not really. You know, I, I really, I, I was really intrigued and fascinated by the script, by the idea of working with this amazing cast and, you know, the creators. Everything in the project seemed amazing, mm -hmm. but we never know. We never know what's going to be, you know, the final result. We just, you know, it's a big bet, but... What was, um, was the returning point where you suddenly realized the penny <laughs> dropped and you were like, oh my God, this is absolutely huge this program right in the middle of it doing it uh -huh. uh, i think we felt the scope of it and uh when it when it came out the response was really really amazing but it was surprisingly you know really really big yeah i mean people are absolutely hooked on it i know people are absolutely so excited for the new season coming out next week what is it about westworld that you think has engrossed people so much uh, it's hard to tell, but I think the subject matter itself, it's already, you, you know, we're dealing with uh, technology, AI, and, but basically I believe ultimately the show is trying to discuss human nature. So it's very identifiable, very relatable, mm -hmm. um, but I think that's my, you know, humble opinion, but I think it's a very smart, just very smart writing, and uh, the, it talks about all those things. In a, in a way that it's entertaining, but also it's very, it, it's just thought provoking. And I think people like that. I think um, what's interesting as a viewer is the merging of like this old idea of America, the Wild West, which is a really right. traditional idea with <clears throat> something so futuristic, mm -hmm. um, which I think is interesting, especially with everything that's going on in America right now. Is that yeah. something that kind of you were talking about when you were making it. Yeah, yeah. One of the uh, one of the things in the show was the violence. You know, when it first came out, you know, it was a, it was a big thing, and uh, and the whole idea is to study, uh, you know, human nature and you know human appetite for violence. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the idea is to discuss that and try to understand where you know in Westworld the guests you know they come and they are allowed to be whatever they want to be. They are allowed to do whatever they want to do. Uh, and those dark places that we all have inside. Yeah. And, you know, so, yeah, it's very contemporary in that way. I think the violence you've just touched on is something a lot of people have commented on. It's very graphic at times, even mm -hmm. if... It's strange because it's so graphic, and yet the characters, a lot of them, are robots. They're artificial intelligence, and right. yet it's still like... Like, yeah. what do you, a lot of people have said that maybe it's kind of too violent. What would you say to those kind of critics? No, it, it's, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, I'm going to take... As an example, my character is a host, so I play Hector. Hector is a host in the very first episode of the first season. Um, he gets shot at the end. And then, you know, he's, he introduces himself as a villain. So the first thing you think, okay, that's the villain, that's the bad guy. Then, you know, a couple minutes later, there's a guest that comes and shoots him in the head and starts laughing mm -hmm. hysterically. So I think the interesting thing is the inversion of roles. Who is the villain here? Who is the bad guy? Who is, is that the guy, the, the robot that's being programmed to be the bad guy? Or is that the other guy that came there just for pleasure and wanted to shoot somebody in the head? I think that's the most interesting uh, thing about, you know, the, the, this whole concept. Yeah, absolutely. And so would you say to have that discussion, you need to see the violence, you need to actually see it in front of you rather than just having it described? Or yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe so. It is, like you said, sometimes it is graphic, but it, there's always a purpose. It's always in the in the context of what has been discussed. Yeah, it's never just kind of gratuitous or No, I, I don't think so. Uh -huh. um, what would you say, as you know, the second season is about to come around the corner, what would you say was the takeaway message from the show? Because as you mentioned, there are a lot of themes that are very relevant uh, in 2018. It's a hard question because it's not one message. Yeah. I think that is, 
you know, ultimately, I believe that the, the viewers, they want to be part of the painting. Uh, so, you know, we throw the colors there, uh, blue and red, and the, the purple will become purple inside the viewer's mind. So I believe that every person will take whatever they, you know, feel they want to take, but we are discussing, like I said before, a human nature, a free will, uh, memories, technology, AI, manipulation, and, and so on. There's a lot of subjects being discussed there. So the message is kind of, you know, I'll leave it up for the audience to, to you know, pick yeah. up whatever they feel. On, um, on the subject of that audience, we've got a lot of fans in the audience today. Um, Westworld fans have become very, very devoted. There's a lot online, a lot of online communities, a lot of online fans. Right. And people are super into this show. Have you had any particularly memorable fan experiences with Westworld fans? Um, I have been having it. Uh, we've been promoting the, the show, and mm -hmm. uh, just uh, two days ago in Los Angeles, we were we had the premiere, and in the red carpet, you know, right across the street, there were a couple fans, and then I came up to talk to them, and there was one of th one theory that I thought that was really interesting. I hear them all, yeah. and, and I try not to make any conclusion, especially because you know, I don't know, I, I really don't. But this guy came to me and said, "Do you know Westworld actually exists?" I'm like, what do you mean? It's like there is something very similar in Europe. Somewhere in Europe, there is a park where people go to exactly, exactly what do you think, to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. It's not called Westworld. It uh -huh. doesn't have a Western theme, but according to this guy who looked me in the eyes and he was precise about his theory, he said it exists. Like, is he talking about Disneyland Paris? I don't do know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it was something else. Um, let me ask. So the trailer, the, the, uh, the tagline of season two is the door, and the tagline for season one is the maze. Um, so what, is, what are the big differences between season two and season one? Because obviously we saw there in the trailer that the, the AI characters are now kind of out and about, which I'm guessing is going to be... Chaotic. Simply. Yes, chaotic for sure. Revolutionary for sure. Um, and let me try to do um, summarize because we. It's not that we are going to say much because we are not allowed to say no. much. And I don't want to get anyone in trouble. But uh, also, well, if you do want to spill the beans. No, just spoilers. Do. Just spoilers. You know, we don't. We don't. That's the part of the fun. So, uh, what can I say about second season? I think it's very different. Uh, than season one. Season one, we lay the foundation. Uh, now the viewers, they know, they know the game, they know the players, and they know the characters. But the world they saw in the first season has been absolutely turned upside down. Now, so you start with a very new world. There's a there's a different energy to it. Um, my feeling is that it, there's an emotional journey on this one. Our, the hosts of the park are finally in touch with, with their own memories. Mm -hmm. Like for my character, Hector is going through a, a journey of self-actualization, self-discovery. So there's all these you know, transformations that are happening. He's, basically, our hosts are becoming more human. And now that they have free will, the question is, what will they do with it? Yeah. So I think that's season two. Uh, you just touched on your character, Hector. Let's actually have a look at you in action. This is a clip from the new episode, which airs on Monday. So let's have a look at Rodrigo in action. Oh, it was your, your fellow uh, Simon Quarterman who plays uh, Lee. Mm -hmm. He's from here. He's a oh, great really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great friend. Amazing. So um, you just mentioned before we watched the clip there, there's a, there's a changing of power you know, the, uh, the hosts are now kind of the ones in control. Right. Um, so what does that mean for Hector? Because we've just seen him there. He's reunited with his weapons. Yeah, he's reconnecting uh, with Maeve. Um, and they're going to be in a mission. There's a mission. And uh, I think the biggest thing is that they are in a very different mode now. Uh, the f I think the first season you saw, you know, these characters, like for Hector, he was the sort of like an archetype of the villain. Mm -hmm. A macho villain, you know, badass, you know, and all that. But that was, that was a type. That was a, a programmed type yeah. to be a host in the park. Now, 
on season two, we have all that. That's the, the, that's the base, that's the foundation. But now that will become slowly more and more human. So it's all about dealing with his own humanity, his feelings, for the first time he's feeling emotions and trying to deal with that. And it's interesting because we constantly, I think, take for granted our emotions. Yeah. Not emotions like crying or like any kind of emotion. You wake up, you're gonna dress something, you feel something. You hug your friend, you feel something. But we don't pay attention to them because there's so much distraction nowadays. But I, in order to play this, I had to pay attention to every single detail. And it's amazing how human beings are complex and there's so much going on and we, we don't even realize. Um, you just touched on that, you're kind of playing him, learning his emotions. In season one, what's interesting is seeing all of these recognizable actors playing robot characters so well and actual robot mannerisms. Did you have to do any sort of training for that to kind of like, to get into like a robot mindset or anything? Was there a lot of that behind the scenes? Uh, no, 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 we just <laughs> make fun with that. Um, well, not really. You know, we, it's interesting because we, in this show, we don't, have a lot of information. We kind of, you know, go learning about the character as we work. Uh, so there was not a big research because there was, I didn't know my backstory. Yeah. So there was, it's not like, it's a very different approach. It's a very different way of working. Um, but yes, we did have to, at least I did some preparation in terms of, you know, body uh, work, in terms of understanding what is, what is, what is like to be this AI. Uh, creature. Yeah. So, yeah, and mainly a lot of psychological, you know, things uh, that, especially in season two, that we, uh, that I was able to work with little nuances, but, you know, that it, to be able to change his body, to change his expressions, and, and, and also to go on and off narrative. Because part of him, a big part of him, is, a, is, is programmed. Yeah. So he has programmed lines, he had programming. And then sometimes he will go off because now he's aware of things. So it's, it's this back and forth that is very interesting. I think what's really interesting is there's kind of a lot of conversation right now about men and the way we're conditioned and the way we're kind of not encouraged to express emotion and stuff. Right. And so for Hector, he's this kind of macho character in season one. And then we're now seeing him learning his emotions and things like that. Absolutely. That was, that was fascinating because it's exactly what you said, especially with a figure, with an archetype like Hector, which is the macho figure. Um, very interesting to find uh, fragility and sensibility and to be able to express that in a, in a human way. It was, it was great. And obviously, without giving too much away, how does, he, how does he cope with these kind of newfound emotions, given that he's always been so surface level running around shooting everybody with no, with no consequences. <laughs> it confuses him. I imagine so, it right? It confuses him. He, he, at first, he has a very hard time to deal with it. And, but he, you know, it's a journey. That's, that's, that's season two for, it's the journey of them, learning how to deal with it. But it's very uh, confusing and, uh, well, watch it. Yeah, I watch it. <laughs> dot, 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 to be continued. Uh, we've had a question in from Lynn on Facebook, um, who wants to know, who is the funniest cast member on Westworld? And obviously it's a big cast, you've got a lot of people to choose from. Uh, Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. He is the loveliest, sweetest man, uh, and, and he's actually very funny. Can you, can you give me an example of something funny He does that impersonations, done? impersonations. Uh, one time he did Brando and De Niro for me, which was... I, I couldn't even believe it, and yeah, it was great. Well, I want to ask you about the cast of Westworld, actually, because obviously it's, like a lot of shows right now, actually, it's such a big cast, but with this, there's some big players in there. You just mentioned Anthony Hopkins, but people like Evan Rachel Wood and Tandy Newton, who you've worked with. Well, Tandy, I, I will, oh, okay. excuse me, Tandy I'm gonna, Newton. Tandy, yeah. If you are watching Tandy, Tandy. I apologize. Yeah, <laughs> Tandy is very funny, incredibly funny, and I didn't know that. Uh, she's very funny, and I love working with her. Uh, I guess in season two, you you've mentioned that the two of you are on a mission, yeah. so you'll have been spending a lot of time together. A lot of time together. Um, what about everybody else on the cast? Are there still, because it's so big, are there still people whose paths you haven't really crossed yet, or? Yeah, it's a big cast, you know. There, uh, We just saw each other now at the premiere in Los Angeles. For the first time, we were all together, and hey, yeah, we're in the show, but we do... <laughs> Yeah, because we don't get to really hang out together 
all of us. It's like, you know, I work more with Tandy, with Simon this season, and then Avon sometimes, but we don't, you know. At Harris, for instance, I worked more on the first season. Yeah. Th th this time, not that much. So, um, but yeah, but we were all together. Um, What's it like um, working on a show with such a big cast like that? Because I imagine it must get pretty hectic when you've got so many different people and so many kind of actors whose stories are interwoven. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more tricky for the writers, but for us, it's it's like I said, you know, I have I have this, uh, you know, sort of like three, four actors that I, I worked much more this this season. And we are, you know, sometimes we have, we cross, you know, we're, we're shooting and then we see, I see Avon going, you know, to the other <laughs> yeah. studio next with, oh, what are you shooting? Oh, I'm shooting something from episode four. And, and we see each other like from far away and, and, and we're all working on the same project, but not in the same place or same studio. Uh, we touched on kind of how violent and intense the show can be. When you're shooting scenes like that, do you still get the opportunity to have fun on set or is it kind of like business, serious face on, we're not gonna have any laughs? What's the, like, yeah, what's no, the balance? It's impossible not to have a laugh when you work with Tandy. She's, oh, seriously? yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I'm, I'm not kidding, I'm, she's like really the best. And uh, we, do, we do have a, a, a light atmosphere even though we're shooting, you know, sometimes heavy scenes, we, we have a very friendly uh, environment. But um, when we have like, at least for me, when I had like action scenes like with a horse or shooting weapons, I'm not a weapon guy at all, mm -hmm. never been, but I learned because of Hector. Um, of course, there's a part of me, you know, the boy in me, it, it has fun, you know. Oh, I'm in a horse, now I'm playing, you know, cowboys. And yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that, uh, but also I have to, you know, I'm playing a, a part. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a, you know in a in a real amusement park, and I'm not a boy. I have the boy inside, but uh, so but we do have fun. Uh, when you started working with all of these amazing actors, was anyone particularly surprising when you met them compared to what you were anticipating or expecting? Well, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go back to Anthony Hopkins because when I you know his sir. Anthony Hopkins, yeah. and then I first time I see him, he's crossing the. I, I'm at the parking lot, my first day doing, you know, makeup tests and all that, and I see him coming. I'm like, whoa, all right. So I'm gonna talk to him now, and then, <laughs> you know, I'm just getting ready to be uh, super uh, polite and sir. And then he he crossed the parking lot and he came in my direction and extended his hand and just. And before I said, uh, it's a, it's a pl I was looking for the word pleasure, honor, whatever it was, he was like, call me Tony. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he, apparently he does that with, uh, with everyone. And he wants to make sure to, just to break the ice like instantly. And I was like, Tony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. call me Tony. And, and he was totally just down to earth. And that was a surprise for me. Because, uh -huh. uh, you know, I didn't make any, I didn't have any expectations like how he was going to be. But I didn't expect Call Me Tony. So when you see him now, is that just who he is? Or kind of if you're going somewhere where he's going to be, are you still thinking, oh, my God, it's Anthony Hopkins? Or are you a bit well, more? He's still, well, yeah, it, like I said, he, he makes it very easy for you. You mm -hmm. know, he, he, he leaves everybody comfortable around him. So, but it's still, you know, still Hannibal Lecter sometimes. <laughs> still looking, I'm like, oh, man. You know, his... his um, I read online that season two has some interesting cameos. Is there anything you can tell me about that? I can't. It's a cameo. It's a supposed to be a surprise. Um, oh. Is there? A, can you? Can, are they big actors or are they surprise non-actors or is that genuinely not like the cat out of the bag? I can't say anything about that. I'm sorry. All right. Well, one thing that I definitely wanted to ask you about because I put on Twitter earlier today that I was going to be interviewing you. And I got so many responses saying, are you going to ask him about Love Actually? <laughs> and I wanted to know, do you, um, are you surprised that you still get such a reaction, especially, I'm guessing, here in Britain, from yeah. fans of Love Actually? I mean, here we go. Cool. Yeah, guys. It's, um, it's where my, my story uh, started here. It was, uh, I think, 2003, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. um, Apparently, they still play Love Actually every Christmas. Oh, it's huge. So I think that's why, in, in, in America, for sure, because uh -huh. I have, a, it's probably the, the movie that I get the most feedback for. It is Love Actually, until today. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, and it's, 
I love the movie. I, you know, uh, it was. I think a, everybody genuinely loved it. Yeah, it's you know it's so well written. You know, Richard Curtis, just like the sweetest man I've ever met, um, and and I think it became kind of like a classic uh, for people, especially Christmas time, like a, a real smart, well written, feel good movie. Um, so, yeah, that's where it all started here. So something you're definitely still proud to be a part very of. Very much. Then. Yeah. Very much. I loved it. And I loved every step of the way. I remember coming here very, like a boy, I could barely speak English at the time. Um, not that I do now, but at the time I could like literally, oh. no, no, I'm like, it's not my language, I'm Brazilian. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I remember the table reading. I arrived for a table reading. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. We do that in on stage, mm -hmm. that's theater. And then there was a table reading, and it was just uh, this long table, and then my name there, Rodrigo, and then right next to me was Laura Lini. <coughs> Across the table was Emma Thompson, and then Alan Rickman, God have him. Um, and I'm like, it's, it felt like I was in a movie, like <laughs> those that play, you know, late, that I'm like, what am I doing? And it was all these amazing, you know, British actors that I grew up watching. Um, and and that was me, there. and Rowan Atkinson was the other side, so he was everywhere, Mr. Bean right here, I'm like, <laughs> no way, man. It was hard to concentrate in the reading, but I never remember, I never remember, I never forget uh, that moment. We've had a question on Facebook, actually. If you could take one part of your characters from Love Actually 300 or Westworld, what would they be? Take one part. What do you mean? A moment of the uh, a scene? Um, yeah, I'm get <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, one part. That person. Who would? You, what would you? Uh, who would you choose? Yeah, who would you choose? One of these three characters. Yeah, three hundred Westworld. They're very, I love actually. They're so different. They're. I mean, they are. They're very different. I. Um, it depends. Uh, what's the criterion? I mean, I'll pick love actually. I'm not being a, a politic, uh, it's just for real. I, you know why? Because it's very close to my heart. So 300 was a, a character which is very different and mm -hmm. there was a lot of, you know, the process makeup and everything else is very far away from me. Uh, Westworld, I'm having a blast. Uh, but um, somehow uh, Love Actually has, uh, I don't know, I have a very, a very close memory and, and uh, feeling for it, so I would choose uh, Carl. We just uh, we just mentioned the three really big and very different projects that you've been a part of. Like, you know, in your career, you've done so many strange and different things. What's left that you really would like to try that you haven't been able to try yet? I don't have something specific. I always like to be surprised and I always like to be, you know, I think it's like when you when you become friends with somebody. Mm -hmm. Like you meet somebody and something clicks and there's a chemistry there. I think it's it's the same way when I read something, I go like, oh, I don't know how to explain exactly why, but you know, something hooks you and something surprises you or stimulates you and you just feel like, hmm, I, I gotta do that. So I don't have something specific. And uh, looking ahead in Westworld, what would you personally, as obviously the actor who plays Hector, what would you like to see for Hector in the future for, West, uh, for Westworld? Like what I would like him yeah, to Yeah, what would become? you like him to encounter and what would you like to happen to him? Well, I'm going to talk about the future then, not season two. Yeah. But I would love him to... Uh, maybe change his personality. Because this is the beauty of these characters. Mm -hmm. We play hosts. So one day I can be a cowboy, the other, or a bad guy, or whatever, a villain, one of those archetypes. The other day, you know, I could become something else. So I think that, not because I don't, I'm not bored with Hector, I love him. Yeah. So much fun. But maybe he could, you know, we could have a twist there. I don't know. I'll think about that. Yeah. Especially now that he's got his memories as well, so that yeah. would be great to see yeah. him do the complete opposite. Yeah. Uh, Rodrigo, unfortunately, that is all we've got time for, but thank you okay. so much for coming you, on man. Build. Um, if you are a Westworld fan, then the good news is that it is back on Monday, the 20, let me get this right, 3rd of April at 2 a.m. on Sky Atlantic and Now TV, and then again 
at 9 p.m. So for those who don't fancy staying up until the middle of the night to watch a load of robots wage war on the human race. If you've enjoyed this interview, we'll be back at 5.30 with the amazing David Morrissey, who will be talking all things the city, the city. So make sure you tune in for that. But for now, please give it up one last time for Rodrigo Santoro, everybody. Yeah.